Well, I thought as I had this set up ready, I should probably display some of my classic old Fred Reed stuff as well. Because, I don't know, I don't get it out enough. And there are so many miniatures here. So many miniatures. So what I'm going to do is just do a selection of these and uh, show some of the more interesting ones. But yeah, I think the kind of quintessential a few. The thing that I love about Fred Reed is just the simplicity. So let's put this in the center. Just simple, well painted miniatures. A lot of really quite basic kind of standards associated with the paint jobs, but just lots of really beautiful bits and pieces. And when I look at them now, you can see his, his various styles through doing this. But each of them is just so characterful. And lots of just strange kind of medieval notes that he puts in there. Uh, but just really crisp detail, well-defined, you know, tusks, these kind of things. He just puts his stuff together so well. And he painted a majority of my miniatures. He painted about, um, I don't know, I've got about 800 of his, his figures painted. Um, large part of my collection is Fred Reed. Just beautifully well done. He did a few shiny older for me, early older figures. Painted shiny. So I think probably the way they should be painted. So. Here's another small example. I'm trying to see, these are strange figures actually. These are figures that I went through at some time and thought, well, if I'm going to sell my Fred Reeds, these are probably some of the ones that I should sell. Um, because I guess, I don't know, I've got such a large collection of these. And I don't know, I kind of recall really what the time was where I considered selling this stuff, but it was a few years ago. I thought maybe it's the time to actually sell off some life red reads. Uh, what else do I have here? I probably should have left a miniature just up there. Lots of... Uh... There we go. Oh, yeah, these are, these are the ones that I don't particularly like so much. Um, other plastic shields or various bits and pieces here that I'm not really fond of. But I mean, just check out just the detail I'm just going to... Like the dig up the detail just in the headdress alone of this figure. Lots and lots of goblins of various ages. So let's just put a few of these goblins together. And some of these goblins are on different sized pieces. <laughs> let's see if I can find one of them. Instead of bagpipes. You see, this is on a big bus. <laughs> you really, uh, you quite like putting them on different sort of bases. I don't know if it was a commentary associated with my kind of collecting. Because see, some of these guys are on really big bases. It just doesn't make any sense. So, uh, yeah, the thing with Fred was um, probably the volume I gave him. I think was probably slightly overwhelming for him. Um, but the aim was really to fill in the gaps for him and to give him, you know, lots of bits and pieces of work. Um, let me see if there's anything else. These are all ones that I don't particularly like, <laughs> which is a strange box actually to open, but it's the box that I, I had open. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd show them accordingly. Okay. I'm going to put them back in some semblance of order the way they were. Gosh, this little goblin, where does he go? <laughs> uh, oh, maybe it took him out. No. This is the problem of unpacking something live. Hmm. Well, I'm missing a position for that particular goblin. I'll also put back a bigger one somewhere. But, you know, this, this is another favourite one, even though it's in the 
you know, that's another list then. Ideal fonts. You know, these kind of interpretive things that's what this is about. But you're just so many different models, um, all painted to to such a high level. Um, I think one of the things that really resonates with me with Red Style is that it's just such a good standard. Uh, let me see what other scaven I have here. I've got a collection of a few scaven here. I'm not sure if I've got enough to make a. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make a small retinue of scaven. There's another scaven. I've got this guy. I think this is a uh, blood hole figure, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, my collection is very, <laughs> very eclectic. And this one is uh, an interesting box to open up. But I wanted to also test out the... Let's put this guy still facing outwards. Um, I also wanted to test out the camera uh, for these, you know, Fred Reed figures uh, to see how they worked. Uh, this is all kind of lopsided. Anyway, apologies for the uh, quality of the footage. Um, let me see what else I can show through this set. There's not really that much more to show through this. There's a few squigs. <laughs> which we did in a very particular fashion. Squeak towards the centre. Uh, some of the squeaks together. Skaven and squeaks. Not really a standard way of doing things. But yeah, this is a this is an interesting box because this is the one that I went through and I thought. Mm, as to get rid of any, and these are the ones with plastic shields and uh, also blood bowl figures, kind of random blood bowl figures. But yeah, he's just, I don't know, I have so much time for Fred Reed in terms of the stuff that he puts together. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't paint at all anymore. His new thing is props, um, so that's what he, he works on now. Um, but yeah, I miss his, uh, his painting. Be nice if he still painted, uh, but unfortunately he doesn't. So my collection—I don't know if that makes my collection any more valuable or any more interesting to people. Um, but I really don't promote it in any way. But you know, it's all hidden away most of the time. But yeah, they're beautiful figures, uh, and they just capture a very particular time in Games Workshop history in particular. But I do have—I um, do have non-GW painted Fred Reed figures in my collection as well. Uh, but yeah, these are just, uh, these are my lesser Fred Reeds. I need to get my greater Fred Reeds out. In fact, I've got a bunch of Imperial Guard, which I could probably, let's see if I can do a transition here. I'm just going to step away from the camera, pull out the Imperial Guard box, <laughs> and uh, I'll leave the squigs running for a time there. Oh my goodness. The Imperial Guard box will have a lot more in it. So let me try and seed that. This is where it all goes terribly wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if I can seed that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's a lot of Imperial Guard in here. So let me start by placing a, a few Imperial Guard. Move the squigs out. Then I've got to move the squigs out. Carefully, oh. so as not to knock the Imperial Guard, and then, oh my goodness, there are just so many Imperial Guard figures. Um, let's start with some strange stuff. And while these are rotating, let me shut this one out, and let me, uh, Get the other thing ready. So I've got a bunch of um, what are they called? The dry packs that just basically suck up moisture. And I've got them. Let me close up this case. I've got them in the cases, just in case. Seriously, 
as water and fluids in general are just the enemy of miniatures, uh, particularly older miniatures. And, um, okay, let's get this thing squared away. Uh, so let me pack up the lesser interesting crookeries. I thought I had to put them on the top here. I'm sorry. Not very interesting for you listening in. Not good video at all. Okay, so that's the that case cleared away. Let's have a look in the Imperial Gutter for some really good examples of Fred's work. So, oh, there are just so many. So many. When I got Fred initially to do work, um, a lot of it was just... Sorry, excuse all the noise. Do a range of other stuff. A lot of it was just Steel Legion initially. I had a lot of uh, painted Steel Legion. And Fred's Steel Legion, I think, is just, for me at least, some of the most kind of iconographic uh, stuff that he did. I mean, I, his Imperial Guard and his um, Greenskins were just absolutely top notch. And I think, from my perspective, this was really where it was at uh, with Fred. The, the Greenskins in particular, uh, he just had an amazing way of translating um, the work of Kev Adams uh, over to, uh, you know, painted form. He just had the, the beautiful nuances. He has a lot of camouflage in here. That's this kind of, what he called chocolate chip camouflage. So I've got a lot of figures of that. I think I probably already put out one of those. So let me put this one back. Let me move this over. So yeah, his Steel Legion was really where it was at. And I had a lot of Steel Legion that I'd started painting initially. I'd bought a pig in them, started painting them. And Fred just, you know, took them on and made them his in terms of the various styles, which was just wonderful. Let me see if there's anything interesting in this that I haven't already shown. Gosh, this is just a lot of, a lot of Imperial Guard. Oh, uh, there's some, uh, do we have a Bin Laden in here? So yeah, there's a bunch of mixed stuff in here as well. Old Space Marines, some Orcs. Let me uh, get these moving on. Uh, so let me take out this one and this one. And let me put up... So for some reason when he painted the Taliban, he put red bandanas on. <laughs> but yeah, he did it. That was his style. So I've got a lot of Taliban with red bandanas for no particular reason other than that's the way that Fred painted them. Um, which, you know, it was his thing. I guess I can't complain. Uh, let me see, is this guy even going back in? There's always the fun thing with multiple cases with different formats and different, uh, different poses. So let's see if this guy will go in in any form like that, I guess. Okay. So again, sorry, narrative. Um, what's interesting from this lot? Nothing really that I haven't already talked about. The chocolate chips, the marines. Uh, gosh, there are a bunch of old space orcs in here as well. So the Taliban and space orc together. This is, uh, yeah, they're just really beautiful old space orc figures. Um, which I have a lot of time for. And really anything old in the um, kind of collecting sense was stuff that I like from Fred. Um, <laughs> we have a classic old Space Marine. And Fred's stuff just, you know, kind of transcended um, a lot of the eras that I really liked. Um, you know, this is not Rogue Trader, this is Rogue Trader plus one. This one's Rogue Trader, I think. This one's Rogue Trader plus one. Um, what else do we have in here? Do we have another marine? No, we've got another orc. I think this is an, another orc rogue trader, original one. Um, and this very definitely is a rogue trader, original one. But Fred has done it again very much with the, um, what is it? Uh, Africa Core style paint job. So, uh, yeah, some beautiful miniatures. What else is in here of interest? Oh, we've, we do have some. Um, I don't know what these are. I think they're marines to go with the Taliban. So I'll put some of these orcs back. Put the marines out. And I think there's a Terminator in here as well I wanted to show. Um, maybe a Terminator captain. So we've got the marines, just the orcs and marines actually come 
almost fit together in colour, but not quite. So let's go in the centre. Actually, really, I should put the Terminator in the centre because this is a beautiful figure. I'll just ease the Terminator out. Oh my goodness. So Fred actually looks a lot like this Terminator, at least in, in the face. And whenever you have a Citadel miniature like that, which is pretty frequent actually, a lot of them are that. Um, Gosh, what's it got on the, has it got something stuck on the bolt pistol? Oh, well, I'll have to look. I think it might be a, um, a seal that he's stuck on the bolt pistol. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. Um, but yeah, just so many beautiful points of detail. I really understand why Fred doesn't paint anymore. I think the, the level of detail that he puts into these figures just indicates very strongly. Uh, what do we have here? Do we have the bit of <laughs> I have the Bin Laden somewhere through these figures. No, this really isn't very interesting. Oh, this is a, a relatively modern guard figure, which I'll switch out the Terminator, which I'll put back very carefully. Um, and then this is a, probably one of the more recent of the guard figures. So I have the flag bearer somewhere here as well that went with that. Uh, what do we have here? Or Steel Legion, more grenade launchers. Um, he did Steel Legion in camouflage, which was a, a thing that he did. Not the popcorn camouflage, different kind of camouflage. Um, but yeah, I had that for... Threw that in the mix towards the end. So yeah, a lot of these figures were just things that interested me at the time. Things that I, you know, had some degree of interest in, um, and just, yeah, a lot of it was just stuff I either was contemporary to Games Workshop at the time, uh, or stuff that I found on eBay that just really interested me, and I wanted to see what Fred's interpretation of it was. And he and I worked together for about three years, I mean, just sending parcels of figures and then painting them, sending them back. But it was really the I don't know the aim, I haven't been able to work with painters like that since. Um, really, I took about 18 years off, maybe, mm, I don't know, 15 years off. Um, and all these figures were painted in 2003 through to 2005, early 2005. Really, probably mainly 2003, 2004. Um, so anyway, that's a brief look at my Fred Reed collection. And yeah, these are combination of Imperial Guard and figures that I thought about selling, which is a pretty interesting way to look at, at Fred's uh, particular perspective on painting. But yeah, just really beautiful figures.